Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and Apple just released the Mac OS Sonoma 14.1.2 update. This update's a little weird because it was split into two different build versions for different Mac hardware. Plus, it patches a very important Safari zero day vulnerability. We've also got our fleet of Mac test devices for Sonoma to make sure that your update installs properly, running it on a brand new Mac or an older unsupported Mac with Open Core Legacy Patcher. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. Now, for the only updates for Mac OS today was Mac OS Sonoma 14.1.2. Mac OS Ventura did not get an update and Mac OS Monterey did not get an update. Now, there's an important reason behind that. That's because this update includes a Safari WebKit fix. So Safari was updated to 17.1.2 in Sonoma and associated standalone Safari updates were issued for Ventura and Monterey. To make sure you're covered for the security update on Ventura and Monterey, make sure you download and install the Safari 17. 17.1.2 update. I'll show you what that looks like. If you're on Ventura or Monterey, Apple's going to want to try to get you to Sonoma. So it makes the update really big here, but you got to scroll all the way down here and then click on more info. And then you'll see the Safari 17.1.2 update and you can install that right here. Now on the iOS side, we've got 17.1.2 and iPad OS 17.1.2. And those are the only updates on that side. We did not get a watch OS update. Our demonstration Mac here today is a 2020 M1 13 inch MacBook Pro. For the 14.2 update, if you want to get more information about it, you can click on more info and the update size from 14.1.1 will be the smallest updates, 845 megabytes. Now remember, if you're coming from 14.0, 14.1, it's going to be larger. And if you're coming from an unsupported Mac with open core legacy patch, it should be around 12.5 gigabytes in size. And that is normal. All you need to do is click on update now and agree and your password and there it goes okay there we go we're preparing the update now we're going to keep track on how long it takes okay we're back up after the update what is the build version of 14.1.2 and if you're on an m2 mac and below it is 23b92 there was no associated beta update with this security update release now if you're on an m3 the build number is 23 b2091 so that's again if you're only on an m3 mac only how long did it take to install a 14.2.1 update it is right in line with the 14.1.1 security update which was only eight minutes to install this one was even faster at seven minutes because the preparing time took four minutes and the actual installation time took three minutes so that's right in line with security updates now once we get to 14.2 for example that's where it's going to jump up to a little bit higher because we're installing features and big os changes now let's talk about Safari with Safari update. And of course it is because it includes that WebKit vulnerability fix, which I talked about earlier, 17.2.1. And on Sonoma, it's 19616.2911.12. The standalone download is also available, like I mentioned, for Ventura and for Mac OS Monterey for 17.1.2. These are the direct downloads in case you need to reinstall Safari or anything like that. And those are available on my website. Now, Apple also released a full installer for both versions of Sonoma. The 23B92 is right here, and then the 23B2091 for M3 only is also here. And same for the IPSW files to be able to restore your Mac with Apple Configurator 14.1.2 and the version for the M3 Macs only. Right now. What about the system firmware and the iBridge? Well, for 14.1.2, it was not updated for the Apple Silicon firmware. It is the same since. 14.1 the same goes for the os loader version and if you have an intel mac the bridge os version remains the same now i keep talking about these versions where can you get that information well if you go to about this mac and then click on system information you'll see it under the hardware overview you can see the mac model the chip the memory but this is the system firmware version that i'm always talking about and you'll see the bridge os version here for intel and the os loader version now keep in mind the os loader version will be the same as the firmware version if you're on some Sonoma. But if you're on Mac OS Ventura or Mac OS Monterey, the OS version will be lower. So that's why the OS loader version will, could be different than being the same as the system firmware version. All right, now that we got all that version information out of the way, what's actually even new in the 14.2.1 update? Well, Apple's pretty much straight up here. It says that it includes bug fixes and security updates, and it is recommended for all users. Now, again, we've been complaining about this for a long time, especially if it says that there's bug fixes, but it doesn't actually list what it fixes. 
the main focus here on this update is security. Let's go over to the security page and take a quick look at that. When we look at the security update page, we can click on the Sonoma 14.1.2 update. And we can see that there's two CVE WebKit vulnerabilities for Safari that have been named here. These are zero days and these are have been actively exploited in the wild and these are the ones that are very important because this is why apple didn't wait to put these security updates into 14.2 which is already on beta 4 so it's probably coming out within two weeks or so that's why they pushed this out now now if we go back to my page we can see what uh, the google threat team maddie says that this new in the wild that's itw zero days were discovered there was an associated cve for chrome that was just patched and then these two cves for safari and they were patch very quickly because this is a pretty serious security vulnerability but that's also why I recommend that you install the Safari for Ventura and Mac OS Monterey to make sure that you are protected against this vulnerability. Now since there's no bug fixes listed in the 14.1.2 update, no associated enterprise fixes, and usually those are only put on a major feature release 14.0, 14.1, and 14.2. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench 6 benchmark scores. On 14.1.1, we had 2403 for a single and an 8792 for a multi-core. After installing the 14.1.2 update, we've got a 2402 and an 8748, so right on target. Okay, now let's talk about OpenCore Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs and Mac OS Sonoma 14.1.2 update. On our demonstration Macs here, we've got our 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro, we've got our 2013 Mac Pro, and we've got our non-metal 2011 17-inch MacBook Pro. So let's first go over a quick demo on installing the update so you can see the new progress with the OpenCore Legacy Patcher update because this patch, as we talked about in the previous video, fixing the issues with the kernel de debug kit causing problems with the Wi-Fi when we install an update what's going to happen is open core legacy patcher is going to recognize that now and that's keeping an eye on the software update system in the background so once we open up system settings and then we click on general and then we click on software update we're just going to check to see what's up there and it sees 14.1.2 it's not going to do anything until we click update now we can click the more info so you can see that size that 12 gigabyte size and again that's normal for any patched open core legacy patch app you're going to have to install the full update that's normal so if we click update now it's going to immediately start to download the update and then in the background we've got the check going off right now and then the launch team is going to fire off and there it goes and then this is the message we're going to get open core patcher has detected that a mac os update is being downloaded 14.1.2 the patcher needs to prepare the system for the update it will download additional resources need post update and it will take a few minutes so let's click click ok and you can see that the kernel debug kit is now being downloaded but keep in mind it's going to be downloaded at the same time that the mac os sonoma update is going to be installed let's go into our macintosh hard drive our finder and then go into library and then developer and then in the folder here is the kdk folder and this is what we're going to see what it's going to do is you can see that we have our previous package here for our kernel debug kit for 14.1 and once it's installed you'll see a new folder in here that's how you can tell it's installed and that's not going to happen you'll just see once it's done downloading you'll see the new package sit here but it's not going to install it's just going to set it there so after the update is installed it's going to come back up and it's going to need this package here but the problem is is that sometimes the previous kdk is not compatible with the newer os and we can't get those critical wi-fi drivers needed to download the compatible version of the kernel debug kit so downloading it first now is going to prevent the problems from happening once we get to the update so now that we know how that system works let's take a look at it once it's fully installed on the mac pro system so here's our mac pro system running on 14.1.2 from 2013. now what i wanted to do is show you some of the progress that was happening with the update so we had that kernel debug kit downloading that was that first part and once that was finished then we can see that they were both downloading at the same time like we noticed on our 2000 17 that we were just looking at but after the updates done and it restarts and installs and then we come back up from that first update you might not see a background it might be all white but what should happen is this window should come up right here it's detected that you're running without root patches and would like to install them 
the Mac OS update wipes out all the previous root patches and they need to be reinstalled. So you can see for this Mac Pro, we need AMD Legacy GCN and Modern Wireless. But notice this warning. It doesn't have Wi-Fi at that point like we talked about, but that's okay because we have that kernel debug kit stored in the developer folder. It's going to install that and then apply those drivers to the snapshot and then it's going to restart with those drivers and then we'll be fully patched. So once you click on OK, then the next process will start. You'll see the patches being applied automatically and then look, it found that KDK that we downloaded before the update and now it's installing the KDK and then when it's all done, it'll ask you to restart and you'll be good to go. The thing is, is that if you're worried about that something's not working with that system, just go into that developer folder, library, developer, and then make sure before you reboot that you have that 14.1.2 KDK. If you do have this package in there, you're ready to go. Now keep in mind, there's some Macs that don't need that KDK. Like for example, that 2012 Mac mini that I was using in the previous video. Now what I'll do is I'll put a list of the machines that need the KDK in the description below. So if you don't see that, your Mac might not need that kernel debug kit, but that's a very specific list. So that's the installation process on this Mac Pro. Everything worked fine. We've got our Wi-Fi, we've got our Bluetooth, everything's working okay. Now here's our non-metal test on our 2011 17-inch MacBook Pro. Everything went A-OK. -okay. We've got our Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, sound, everything's working great. And we had our 14.1.2 KDK. Everything's A-OK -okay on the latest version, Open Core Legacy Patcher 1.2.1. So, so far, no problems with it whatsoever with the patcher. Everything worked great on all three devices, and I think we are looking good to go if you want to be able to install 14.1.2 on your unsupported Mac. Now let's talk about the recommendation. Do I recommend installing the 14.1.2 update depending on what, you're, what hardware you're on? If you're on a supported Mac, install the update. It only took seven minutes to install from preparing to installation. So if you're on a supported Mac, fully recommend that because it's a high priority security update. Now, if you're on an unsupported Mac, I still recommend installing it, but if you wanna hold off until 14.2, it's gonna come out in maybe two and a half weeks here, and that's totally fine, but I still recommend installing it across the board to keep your Mac secure. Now let me know in the comments, have you updated your Mac to Mac OS Sonoma yet? Are you waiting until 14.3, like the middle of the road update? Uh, are you you're not going to install it at all because Ventura, Monterey, or Big Sur are working okay for you. I'm curious to know. If you're wondering about me, I'm still on Mac OS Ventura because it's working very well. And honestly, I usually wait until the point three update. That's when Apple usually has everything squared away and that's what they call their spring release. And that's usually when I upgrade my personal machine. But that's just me though. So let me know what you do in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.